everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Guess what? July's Ditchy Kits are ready. What I thought I would do is uh, jump right in and show you a project with the first one. It's called Vintage Storm and these are images of vintage storm pictures. They're really cool. It's kind of a different concept but I thought the images are just hauntingly beautiful. Uh, all different types of storm scenes. I'll just show you the rest of that one particular Ditchy Kit. Um, well, let me go closer. So, well, that's a little too close. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of pictures of like cyclones, tornadoes, stormy weather, um, clouds, thunderstorms, rain showers, lightning, things like that, that uh, just evoke that kind of blustery, wild, stormy times. I like storms. I'm a big storm fan. Um, I, I love watching them. I love the, I don't know, the crackling newness of the fresh air of a storm. We get some interesting storms here in Florida for sure. So um, that, I don't know, just kind of, I don't know. I thought it would be a cool topic. Plus also, I have a lot of questions um, from people about how to make a man style journal or a male style journal. And I thought these storm images might um, work in that flow. Although ladies can enjoy storms as well. Um, as I do, so um, they are unisex. <laughs> okay, all right, so um, I am going to grab a file folder. These are like the hanging file folders. I probably got these in the thrift store, and I'm, I like this brown sort of cigar-colored office color, um, and I'm just going to cut this off so we have a, some pieces to work with, and I might be able to Get rid of, hang on, let me see how fat that is. Okay, let me actually take it off to about here. Um, and uh, I'm going to use a, a craft knife. Very carefully cutting that off. Well, that went well. Yay, that's a good sign, right? Things are going to go well. So we have this giant piece we can use. And this is, it's a nice thickness already. I mean, I could definitely just go with one side of this. Or I could double it up and make it a thicker cover. That would be cool, too. Huh, I like that idea too. Let me see if I can make this into a thicker cover. Um, I'm going to get an embosser, one of those weird little embossing tool things. Here I come. Okay, and if you don't have an embosser, you can use your, um, an, if you don't have an embossing tool, you can use your um, bone folder. All right, so when I, when I say embossing tools, I'm talking about these things with the little funny nubs on the end. And um, so we'll, we'll try both. Oh my Lord, will this work? Okay, I'm sure it will. Okay, so that would give a nice thickness actually to the cover. Okay, let me actually see how, I'm just taking a, a size measurement here. It's, it's a 11 and, 11 and three quarters. Well, that makes it difficult, making me do math and stuff like that. So I think my way out of that is I'll just make it thinner <laughs> so I can divide. Uh, I don't know if I need to do that. Let's see. Actually, let's just see if I can wing this. Okay, we're going to try and figure out. Okay, so here's our halfway point. We know we want to be here. And then we want to kind of... Okay, let's just fold the thing in half. Let me get some clamps. I think this will work better with some bulldog clips. So I just have a little bit of something helping me as I do this. Okay, to keep my edges together exactly so they don't run around and I can figure out exactly where I want to put my, my spine. Okay, okay, so that's going to give me, so the, yeah, that does make them stay right there, so that's pretty good. I probably didn't need to go crispy crisp there with that line, but I did, so we're here now. Um, but I think I want to do a little bit wider of a spine. So let me make, I don't know, maybe an inch spine. Um, I'm putting, I'm aligning the top and the bottom with a line on my craft mat. I'm just gonna make a mark here and here. I, I don't even know if I need to make these marks. If I leave it right here, I can probably just use my ruler. I'm gonna just use my, I'm gonna take my metal ruler, turn it upside down and put it to align with these two next lines. And this is where I'm going to use the magic of the embosser or bone folder. So if you have the embossing tool, I'd pick one with a decent 
nabaru on the end. Align. Make sure you're aligned. Make sure everybody's aligned. Are you all aligned? Let's see. I think you're aligned. Okay, we'll go with you are aligned. Can you see? Yeah, okay. So, remember, okay, okay. I think I went into the paper. That's okay. 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 Maybe we'll try this line. Maybe a smaller one is better to make the line. Okay, so we have that one. And then this one. We'll see which one works better. I'll try both for you. Okay. I'm going to use a bone folder. It'll do the same thing, basically. Actually, I think the bone folder is easier. See that? And this is a multi-tool, so you get more bang for your buck. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have those lines. See that? Now I'm going to fold along those lines. It'll be a little difficult in the beginning, but we'll get it going. It'll be all right. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's very good, actually. Happy with the, the outset of that. And then this, we're going to do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like this. Okay, so did we do well? I think so. How wide did this thing end up being? Um, so my covers, my official covers are five and a half, which is perfect. Look at that. Ah! All right, we're good. We are golden. So let me just fold crisply the other one. And we can decorate this up any old way. We totally can. All right, so, okay, this is the mass of papers that I'm going to use to make the signature pages. They're just some old dyed pages, coffee dyed pages, college rule, music, calligraphy pages, just kind of cool stuff. I'll be right, uh, well, I guess maybe I should show you this. Okay, so some of these are a little more fragile than others, so we, we'll just put that one aside. Um, Okay, so let me try, it's going to be a lot of, at least it's going to be a four signature dude here. One, two, oops, oops. Now there's already some holes in this paper, so I think that's okay. I think it kind of, kind of looks like this murky, watery, grave kind of paper. It's kind of cool. Um, let's do four, should I use this one? I'm just going to break up break it up and see what happens. Let's just make it break. No, I think no, that one's too crumpy, crumply. Um, we, have, we have to draw our line where we have to draw our line. Okay, I need one more outside page. Let me just care, grab a different page. And they don't have to all be identical or anything like that, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go through here and put, I'm going to make these probably 10 or 12 pages thick. That's usually the range I work in for each pile. So I'm going to pile, let's say, 10 pages in each pile. Okay, I have four piles of 12 pages each, just random papers that I thought were kind of cool that might uh, look nice in this junk journal. So I'm going to show you how I put in one signature, cut it up, and then I'm going to repeat that process off camera to do the four so we can get to the point of uh, decorating with the, digi the, the digi kits. Okay, so I have uh, this clump of papers. Now I want to fold them in half, and it's always nice to use your... Wait. So I have to make sure that they fit. I'm going to fold them in half all at once. Um, you can fold them separately, but I don't mind folding them all together at once using the bone folder to get the crisp clean edge that's coming in here in the center, giving it a whack, like a whack-a-mole whack with the, with the metal ruler, and that keeps them all nice and snuggaroo. Okay, so you can use a paper clip here or something like that if you want to hold them together. But I think what I want to do is I need to glue this together first. So let's just run some glue stick on the inside of here to marry these two sides together. I think it's a good idea to go to the edges. That's probably the most important part. And I could have debulked it a little bit here where the fold is, but yeah, I think it's going to be okay. Kind of got to judge for yourself there on that one. But um, 
Make sure I got stuff in the middle. Got my edges, good. All right, so we'll fold that together. Okay, so now we have that. That seems to be holding together well. And so now we're going to use this to decide how big we want this. So I think, okay, I'm going to align it at the bottom, I do, uh, probably a quarter inch up, okay? And then about a quarter inch in. So I'm going to take a little thing, a pen, also known as a pen, and I'm going to mark it. Let me turn some light on here so we can see. Okay, um, so it's already a quarter inch from the bottom, so I don't need to do marking there. So my quarter inching from the top will be about there, and then about eh, here, I'd say. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to cut this off first, then I'm going to cut this. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to remove that. Now everything is nice and, this is important, get that all in there, down. Hold it together. Make sure you have a nice crease. Nice, sharp crease. No, notice where your lines are. Use your craft mat as a wonderful aligning tool to make sure that you are cutting in a straight line. So I can see that this dot is just below that line. So I'm going to put it, uh, the other edge of the ruler, just below this line. That way I know I'm per what I call pretty darn straight. And we'll just hope, we, we hope for the best. Okay, line there. Here. That looks pretty good. Right there. Okay, don't move. I hope it's pretty good. All right. The bottom is still aligned? Yep. Okay. Okay. Don't move. Work with a, a sharp blade as your friend. I'm almost through. There. I am free. Okay. The same process here. Keeping it all aligned. Okay. And there's my little mark here. So I'm going to See where it is? It's like a little smidge over from this line. So I'm going to put my top of my ruler a little smidge over from that line. And all should be well in the world of everything lining up. We hope, right? Okay, here we go. There. 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 Okay. All right, I have that. I have a signature. I'm good to go. Okay, so what I want to do is place this signature a quarter inch from this side and a quarter inch from that side. Okay, actually, no, I want to place my dots first. That's what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to do the three-hole pamphlet stitch. Nothing fancy here. Our good old friend, three-hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm going to come down about an inch from the top, do one dot here, one, oh, I got four, right? Oh, shoot. Okay, so we're going to do one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot. Okay, ignore that middle one. Okay, about middle. You can measure these if you want. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to place them. Three and four, and then about an inch from the bottom. One, two, three, and four. Okay, there we go. So those are my dots. And turn it sideways. This is the top. I can even put a T on here because that's going to be covered. Um, and I'm going to align this with um, these dots. Now it's better if you actually have all four of these stacked together. Let me do that. Okay, I have a uh, lawnmower going on outside, but hey, we're carrying on. Um, I have gone ahead and trimmed up all of these. Let me just shrink you up a little bit. Okay. And um, some of them are crackly, but I think it's kind of cool. It actually looks like this old ship style, uh, old papery look, which I like, so I'm going with it. I've got all of them together. I'm going, to, I used the first one as a template to cut the other one. So that's how I did that. I just grabbed the first one and put it over top of the second one, and then I cut around it, and that's how I did that, in case anybody was wondering. Um, and they came out pretty darn close, so not too bad, you know? Okay, make sure they're all aligned as best you can, top and bottom, and most importantly, the spines. And the top and bottom is nice if that all lines up, too. Um, okay, so now we're going to take this giant clump, clumpo clumps, 
and we're going to put this clump a quarter inch from this side in and just double checking it's at least a quarter inch approximately from that side we are pretty good ready to migrate just a smidge rooney that way um smidge rooney check double check sliding going back in place it happens okay there that's good we got enough there just a little bit more a little bit more okay now we're going to take a marker I went oops did I move yep I moved okay go back I slipped okay make sure my spines are all showing yes they're all showing there there everybody's in place don't anybody breathe okay this is really important okay so let's see if I can show you how I do this so I, I see where the dots are here like for example here's a dot I'll try and mark them so you can see them better and here's a dot Okay, so what I'm going to do, stop moving your paper span. I'm going to, uh, backwards, I'm going to run a line up from the dot onto the, uh, the backs of the four spines up and down here. Same thing here. If you use a marker, you can really see your dots well. And it's going to be covered primarily, so it'll be okay to make a dot like that. I think I got the four. Did I? I got my big head in there. One, two, three, four. Four. Okay, not really. Let me get in there and mark that dot better. Okay, I think I got them all now. Okay, so we have that that very important step. And now I can put you back up here. Uh, focus you. Put my cap on, and I can take these off now. Okay. Ah. Okay. So now I'm going to do some hole punching. So I'm going to crocodile two big bite punches. Uh, I'm going to use the one eighth. That's the smaller one, smaller hole puncher. It's the little one. Okay. I'm going to come here and I'm going to poke, punch all my four holes. So we got one. It's very easy to go through thick things with this, which is so nice. Okay. And one dot is like a skew. Oh, well, that's all right. It's, it's skew now. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that here and here. Okay, so now I'm going to cut four threads. One, I'm going the height of my journal. One, two, three, three. That's all we need, right? <laughs> and so three times the height of your journal and make a cut. This is like a waxed thread. It's great for, it looks like this. Um, you can buy, I have some links in my Amazon shopper. You can buy it anywhere on eBay or Amazon. Two, three. Okay, so I'm going to cut two more of those, so I have one for each of the four signatures. Okay, now I'm going to take my pile of signatures, my four. This is the top one, so I'm going to start with the bottom one first. This is the one I'm going to show you how I'm um, sewing in, and then I'm just going to magically, with fancy camera action, like the pause button, I'm going to put the other ones in. Um, okay, so where are we? We're here. So now what we're going to do is we're going we put dots on the back right and this is why we did that now just remember this is your top if you have any problem remembering that just put a little pencil mark or something like that it will save you hours of crying later i promise you hours did i say hours i meant hours days okay that's that's my top okay so i have these i'm going to fold it back on itself just because it's easier to punch with the crocodile two big bite and i'm just going to shove everything out of the way on my desk and punch right where those circles are. One, two, now I do have to turn it around here to work. Three, okay, so that is the first, here's my top mark. So I'm gonna fold it the way it originally was meant to be. I'm gonna get my thing in here. Oh, this is my top, I have a top mark here. So that's my top, because that's the way I measured these, because these may not be exactly the same. This is closer than these two, so hey, um, that's, the way, that's the way I roll. You can make them exact if you want. Um, I don't do that. So, um, okay, so I'm getting a big-eyed needle. Big-eyed needles are our friend, yarning needles, darn needles. Blunt end is your friend, so you don't stab yourself. And even a blind bat can, can thread a uh, big-eyed needle. So there you go. So we're going to go the old pamphlet stitch. I'm going to start at the back of the journal, so it would be the uh, hole farthest to the right. And I'm going to go in through the middle, in through the middle, in, 
in through the top. That's a little tricky. Okay, get the right one, right hole. And then, and you can, you can paper clip all this together so it works magically easier. But I didn't do that, so I'm just gonna do it manually. It's only three holes we can do this, right? Yeah, okay. And then we, we just leave a tail, leave a tail, very important, and then go all the way down to the bottom one. So I'm through there, and then I'm through there, and then I'm gonna come back up the middle again, right through there. It's usually easier to get when your strings are pulling your papers together. So I have these two little strings. I call them angel wings, and this is your bridge. You want your bridge in the middle of your two angel wings. Your angel wings should be underneath your bridge. I feel like I shredded the, the thread through. I feel like I did, yes. Let me double check this. Uh-huh. Yep, I think I did. Okay, let me see where that happened. Sometimes if you go through the thread as you're doing it, it's not good. You want to have your thread not thread the other thread. You want them to be free angel wings. Free, not three. Make them about even. You want to pull it snug but not tight. Snug but not tight. You can arrange your papers a little bit. They have a little bit of um, wiggle room, but they're overall they're pretty. They're pretty good. Okay. And and I'm going to put you in place again. Okay. So if you're going to give me a hard time and you're going to wiggle, I'm just going to clamp you. There you go. What are you going to say now? Huh? Nothing. You got nothing. Okay. Here we go. Snug but not tearing. Uh, right over left. Snug but not tearing. Left over right. There we go. And then I do one more just in case I messed it up. But that should give you a nice locked tight knot. Okay, trimming. So I don't want these to dangle below. You can have them dangle below if you want. It's a design style. Um, so then I'm going to put the pages to the right because that's the way they're going to live. I'm going to grab my bone folder. Where's my bone folder? Here, somewhere hiding in the papers. Yep, it's gone. Oh, found it right where, where I left it, right in the papers. And then I'm just going to train the papers this way. You can also train them the other way too, but it's for, most important to train them the one way. Okay, there we go. So they're nice and flat. So, so far we have that. Now I'm going to go pop in the other three signatures. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to, no, I'm not. Never mind. I'm just doing this on my own. Never mind. Look away. Okay, I'm back. I have my four signatures sewn in. I used a charcoal colored thread and this is already a very full journal. I probably could have gone with three signatures and um, maybe 12 pages or four signatures with 10 pages. So I have a little of this going on but I like them stuffed and chunky so that's okay with me and if this is primarily a writing journal I think that would be really awesome but we are going to decorate it up a little bit with um, the vintage storm pictures. I just have to locate them. There they are. Hang on. Okay, so I have located my pictures, and um, there's lots of fun pictures on every page. This is, this is just one page with pictures, but I think I would like to... Oh, that's kind of a cool picture. Um, trying to figure out something for the front page. I think this goes this way. That's kind of cool, too, as the front focal point. I like that one. Okay, so I think I know which one I'm going to use already just by looking at these. And I think it's going to be this one for the front cover. And I think I'm going to just keep the front cover very plain and simple and just have this on it. I think that just, I don't know, it just looks really cool. It's beckoning. Can we say it's beckoning? It's like, oh, I wonder what this book is all about. Yeah, I know, right? So I'm going to glue it down. This is Fabrifix. Um, okay, clear silicone glue. Glues fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, and paper to paper very well. I transferred it into a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle because the walls of this icing piping bottle, bottle are thinner and easier for me to squeeze. The original Fabrifix bottle has thick walls and it's harder on my hands to squeeze. And I get a finer stream of uh, glue coming out with this one. So there we go. Did I do it evenly? Let's hope so. That's not bad. Yeah. I'm always a shot in the dark with me. You never know. All right, there we go. I just, I don't know, I love that. It's just so, is it, is it the Indiana Jones movie coming up? It's like, you know, these old filey documents from the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s. I don't know, any kind of that style. Like, it's just kind of cool. And um, so there, 
All right, so now going inside, we have these to play with. And I have this one. This one is a little bit wide for this particular cover, but I could do something sideways with it, which is what I might do. This front page, the very crinkly one, I'm going to leave as is because I just think that's interesting. I could do things on the inside cover, but I think, I think, okay, so how many do I have here? Ah, uh, okay. So I think what I'm going to do, I think this is what I'm going to do. These, I have two little ones, and these are kind of cool. Now, I could ink these to give them a little more pop. And why don't we do that? Oop, okay. Now, I think I'm going to ink in Walnut Stain. It's a nice, deep brown. Can't really read that, but it says Walnut Stain there. Um, got my brown dauber. Just going to go around. If you tilt the dauber back a little bit, like, if you can see that, you don't get too much on the edge this way. If you, if you come like this, you're going to get more, more edge streak. So if you tilt it back a little bit, you'll just get the edges. So just a little bit of pop. Okay, so I have two of these. And I thought it might be fun to do a little catty corner tuck thing. So let's try that. Could do baby pockets with these. There's so many different things you can do with these. Are you the same size? Oh, you are. Well, maybe we'll do something with three of you. Okay, we'll scrap the catty corner pocket. We'll do that with something else. And we will just have some fun with this. Okay, so maybe here's a nice page. Nice and white to work on. Should we do that one? I don't know, maybe this page. This is kind of a cool page. I think I'm going to do three staggered pockets. And I don't know why, I just think that's going to be fun. Or I could do, oh, oh I got to, I like going all over the place. Okay, so yeah, three staggered pockets. Get my glue. And maybe I could put, um, postage stamps or stickers or a little tiny piece of ephemera or tickets or um, little extra writing papers, whatever you like. Leave enough room so you have room to tuck something if you're going to do the these as pockets. Okay. Be one here. Is that the right way? Or is it that way? No, it's this way. Okay. Make sure you know which way is upright before you glue. Okay. And there. Okay, that's good. And then the last one, I think I'm going to put over here. Which way is upright? That way? Or that way? No, I think it's this way. Yeah. Okay. So we got some stormy scenes going on here. And there we go. Shoot near the bottom. And those will glue down as they sit. So I'm just going to go ahead and that's the first signature. Second signature, maybe just do something very simple, like a, a basic pocket on the bottom. Always easy to do. A nice solid um, constituent of any junk journal, of the junk journal pocket. Doing the backwards inking here just to get the edges nicely done. And no rocket science here, just, just placing these in. Okay do a pocket we can tuck some things in there that's always fun and I guess I'm not going to over pocket this thing because it's already stuffed so much bah ha ha you know who knows how this will end up in the end but um I love to overstuff it's one of my favorite styles lately okay that one we're going to go into signature number three now and find a pretty page to do something on oh that's pretty I will say okay we could do well we could do uh what's that which way do you go? There, yeah, there's water on the bottom, so there, that way. Okay, so we could do, could do catty corner pockets. These are kind of big, but we could, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do L shape, L shape glues, and that way I can tuck something in the middle and it will work. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly ink and ink this. And then I'm gonna show you the other digi kit so you know what else is available for you, depending on your L shape, L shape, L shape. Okay, I have to t say that to myself or I'll, I'll do a pocket. So these are L shaped corner tucks. Caddy corner, corner tucks, okay. All right, there. L, oh, L shape. That's what I want. There, L shape. Okay, talking to myself here. And you guys. Okay, L shape. 
L shape. So once you get this stuff, you know, going, things happen pretty quickly in a junk journal. I know it seems like sometimes it's going to take forever, but no, 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 no. Um, things can happen really quickly because we have this one. I might use, use this for a complete focal point or maybe make it a baby belly band. How about that? A baby belly band. That's what we'll do. It's just a little belly band. You don't need the big ones all the time. Sometimes just a little belly is good. There we go. That looks really nice on the striped black, black and white paper. Get the right glue bottle, Pam. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Get on there and we're good. And there we go. So there are some, some options for you. So that's a nice way to use some DigiKits for a theme. If you're doing a, this is kind of like, I'll call it the expedition uh, storm journal. How about that? And uh, let me show you the other DigiKits that are available for your perusal. For, uh, they came out this month, but they're available forever now that I have them made uh, in my Etsy shop. Uh, this is called Beautiful Flowers. And let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, well, that's a little bit much, isn't it? So just another array of beautiful, gorgeous uh, floral designs, which are always useful um, in any junk journal. If you are a botanical naturalist, uh, herbist, herb, herb, not an herbivore, but, you know, people who like plants and flowers and stuff like that. Um, an herbophile? How about that? Um, a botanical file? <laughs> uh, and just gorgeous, pretty flowers. Always nice to have a, a collection of them at the ready, anytime, ready for you to have fun and make some pretty images and pictures with okay with your junk journals all right so that is beautiful flowers okay then we have oh, a little animal sighting we have little mouse so these are drawings and illustrations of antique and vintage mouse mice mouse mouse like creatures uh, they're very old images they're very beautiful in, in my regard. I have a uh, cousin who would not agree. She doesn't like anything mouse related. Um, but you know, to each our own, and I like um, mice. I think they're adorable. They're very uh, versatile, uh, creative, and resourceful creatures, and they deserve their day in the sun. So here's your day in the sun, little mouse lungs. Here you go. Have your day and uh, live fully. Um, don't eat my flowers. Um, have a happy long life. You probably make it till about two years and then it's all over. So enjoy the journey. And um, they're just cute. They're just darn cute. So if you see yourself in that realm, there you go. Little Mouse is for you. <coughs> okay, that's Little Mouse. And then we have Deep Forest. This is called Deep Forest. Okay. Yeah. All right beautiful forest images. Some are paintings, some are illustrations. Uh, just gorgeous uh, imagery from the past, ready to be heralded. Look at that one, isn't that cool? That's really cool. And hearkened back into our present day just to see beautiful imagery. So if you're doing a nature journal or a fairy journal or a medieval journal, sometimes pictures like this can really blend in nicely. Uh, fall journal, that type of style. I know, we're motoring right along here. We're in the depths of uh, the summer, so we are hopefully going to be cooling off in some months, I hope. Okay, so that was Deep Forest. And last but not least, it's just a fun one called Office Supplies Vintage. Office Supplies Vintage. And this is what these look like. There's some plume quills here, some office scenes, some desk scenes, some, some, this reminds me of my parents. Um, I should put these down so you can see. Um, when they were working in their office way back when. And uh, so here we're getting some typewriters, some people working in the office, all sorts of fun things. 
more vintage typewriters. I think I have another DigiKit just on typewriters, so if you really like typewriters, I got you covered. Um, just very interesting. Here's a paper clip. Uh, you know, everybody's office looks a little bit different, so it's kind of neat. And a paperweight. Some phones of different styles. I think I have different telephone uh, DigiKit as well. So there you go. You're going to have lots to pick from. So there you go. So that is it. I, did, I, I think I showed you the rest of the Storm ones. Vintage Storm has some purple images on a page or two. Mostly black and whites. Very mysterious. Good for um, scary, gothic uh, style as well as weather style or man style or lady style who likes storms and scary blustery scenes. I think they're kind of fun. Not really scary, but they're intriguing. I would say captivating. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me see if I can find... Oh, guess who is right here? Are you right here? You are so right here. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> I take it away, sunbun. Here I am to save the day. Okay, everybody, this is it. Here's the lowdown of what's going on at the paper outpost. Mom has... I'm going to wiggle. No, no, I'm relaxed now. Mom has surface cleaned some horizontal surfaces in her craft room. But alas, they are full again. Yes, it happened very quickly. The desk is a mess, but there's a lot of crafting going on. Why am I talking with my ears, Mother? Why are you doing this? Because they're so cute, I can't stand it. I gotta squish them. Oh, oh, woe is me. Oh, what, mother? Ma, ma. Ah, somebody, somebody save me. Get me out of here. Help, help. I look like a bat. Don't I look like a bat? I'm, I'm a bat. <laughs> no, no, you're not a bat. I could be. You could be. You do look bat-like at, at this moment. We'll, we'll just, like, unbat like you. I'll give you, I think I'll take your ears away. No! Not the ears missing move, Mom! No! All right, I'll give you back your ears. Okay. Um, I'll give you a little rub. <laughs> Make it all better. Okay, it's much better now. Thank you. Happy crafting, everybody. Carry on. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sunny. We have weird days here at the Paper Outpost, and apparently this is one of them. Um, so welcome, everybody, who is new Hello and welcome back to everybody who has been here. If you don't know, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. Um, all my links are down below in the description box below the video. Um, you get a free digital image emailed to you every month. Um, you just sign up for the newsletter and you will get that. Um, you'll get a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. I like to tuck this into the beginning of my junk journal so people know how to use it and what it's for. And uh, you can change the word, meaning the font or anything you like, or use it as is with my blessings. And also, um, there's a junk journal list of supplies you can look around the world for, gather things together as you're traversing the world. Uh, there's a page list of ideas on how to break a blank page. And um, junk journal tips, updates from me, peeks at new digi kits. You got it. You name it. It's on there. The free monthly emailed newsletter from the Paper Outpost from me. And my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts, the audio material, comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's new material. And I put out video podcasts all the time on Spotify, so you can watch those on Spotify. And um, I have an Etsy shop if you're looking for completed journals, bundles, kits, or other things I have for sale. They're available in there. And the hard, cop hard things, like if I actually have a journal for sale, when available. Okay, and um, I sell DigiKits, which are printable, downloadable images, uh, five pages of themed images like birds, Victorian, butterfly, dragonfly, celestial, uh, Victorian times, things like that. There's over 200 to pick from, and you, they're, they're fun to use in your junk journals or any other art projects you may have. Um, if you... I have another service called a print and mail service. If you don't like to print or you don't have a printer, I will print them out for you. 10 digi kits at a time for one flat rate. Uh, just buy the print and mail option and then send me a list of the 10 digi kit names that you want. I only need the first two or three words. Send it through Etsy message or to pam at thepaperoutpost.com, my email address. And um, 
there you go. I will go ahead and mail that off to you. I only, yeah, okay, that's everything there. And then I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies you see me use here, I do try and put those links in my Amazon shop. That does help my shop, but it does not cost you more for um, purchasing the items if you use my links. Thank you. And um, I have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase, create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip toady, a mug, a tote, or a water bottle. And also uh, you can find me on uh, social media, on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges and as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. And most of all, remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.